What's up, what's up, what's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to another episode of the Grief Bully Podcast. I am your host, Jay Nicole. Guys, we are back in the building, rocking and rolling for another episode. And this one, I'm telling you, it's a personal conversation. It's someone that I've known basically his whole life since he was a super <laughs> young bull. And uh, I'm definitely looking forward to this conversation today. As you know, I haven't had a guest in a while. So to break the ice back with this, it means a lot. When I created this platform, I wanted to be able to have these conversations. This It wasn't just about me. It was like, listen, like there are so many people who deal with loss, that deal with this in our communities that never will talk about it, won't really know how to talk about it and so or to be able the to, outlet to exactly talk about and have the outlet to do it so i'm going to welcome to the show a hometown hometown dewan funches what's up man how you doing nicole nice to meet y'all nice to, thanks for having me of course listen it, it takes a lot to be willing to come on and just kind of like share your love and like when you talk about like entertainment because you're hilarious first of all after this, <laughs> when he shares his social media his social media handle i don't know i think instagram is is more like for his business but just on facebook <laughs> always, always can know if I see his name, it's going to be something hilarious that I'm like, yo, this is going to be crazy. But this is different because you, you can have entertainment, you can talk, it can be funny, lighthearted, whatever. But when we talk about grief and loss, it's not that easy to talk about it. So we before the show started, I'm like, OK, talking about the loss of his brother. And then he said something that was very powerful. And he was like, you know, it was a lot more than that. And so sometimes I think that happens when the world knows about like or your community knows about one major loss and then they don't know about the other losses that were major to you. But with your brother passing away in 2017, I noticed just from following the story and following you all, your sisters on social media and just knowing that prior to him actually passing away, there was an incident where he ended up being in a hospital. Just kind of like Walk us into your story. All right. So basically, as for my little brother, um, like you said, prior to being killed and stuff, three months before that, he was shot in the head. And actually, it was me that was there visiting him. It was just me and him alone. And uh, the nurses came in there just to, like, reposition him. And he opened up his eyes, and he stood up on his own feet. And I took a video of it, and I posted it, and it kind of, like, many went viral a little bit. And then he went to rehab for a week after that. And then when we went to pick him up from rehab, he was on a flight to Miami and we looking for him. And he, he called. We finally get in touch with him. He's in Miami. So we're like confused. Like, wait, you just got shot in the head two weeks ago. So that was like kind of like shocking to me. And then seeing it and like with my own eyes when he was like pretty much just like a vegetable and just to open up his eyes and just stand on his feet like five minutes later that was like really like a sight to see like it like did touched you, me a did lot. you feel like that was because a lot of people that people know that i'm a believer so i'm gonna talk about god that's something that i oh, won't yeah, shy away from like, so when you see that was that like wow like this is god is really good and like at that time like i had my own personal stuff going on where i was like kind of like wanting to give up like trying to stay afloat like trying needed something to keep me going and like that kind of like happened and like it was like very shocking it like throws you for a loop throws you off your course and like kind of like messes you up but at the same time seeing the outcome of it and how it like kind of played out it was like a sigh of relief at the same time but it was like god like wow thank you like i just seen a miracle like with my own eyes like i know you're real yeah so, no that that's that's a lot that's a lot to, to take in, to see that. And that's what I was talking about. I saw the video in the hospital when he was back up. And I was like, wow. Because anytime you hear that, even if you never met the person, it's just like, wow, I don't want to see anybody going through that. So to see him be able to bounce back. And then a couple for me, it felt like it was just like instantly. Then the yeah, posts was, were different. Yeah, it was like really instantly. Like it was like a miracle to me. I'm like, wait, like, so... Like I said, I had my own personal issues going on at the time. So it was like, all right, you got to keep going. Like your baby brother, this, like, he, he, he doing this, get back up, keep going, keep going. But that's like the thing with grief. Like, even with that, like, you never really had the time to really talk about it or really grieve. You just kept going, kept going, kept going. And then it's just like, just a staircase of after, right after one thing, right after another. So. No, definitely. So he, he went to 
Miami, he was obviously he's like, wow, like he just bounced back. You in Miami, you doing this, you doing that. Like, oh, what's going on? Yeah, so I'm like, wait, it was just like a shaking your head, like very confusing, but at the same time, like it's a miracle. Like just two weeks ago, you was laid up. Your score was off. They, matter of fact, and that's too, like they put his score back on that morning as well. So he had a surgery that morning. So it was kind of like, really like mind boggling, like mind blowing as well. I'm like, wow, okay, I'm gonna keep going. Like you got to, it's only the only right thing you could do. Definitely. And then unfortunately, since we talked about it, I, I let in with just explaining that he lost his brother. So a couple of months later, then like what happened? How does that happen? Yeah, like that's the like unbelievable thing. So when he actually got killed, it was like he didn't get shot in the head or none of that. It was like, I want to say three shots. I want to say three wounds. I want to say, I believe, I think. I kind of blocked it out, but I want to say, I think, three wounds. And they were kind of like minor. So you like, he survived the head shot three, year, three months ago. So he's strong. He got this. But to then get the outcome that like he succumbed to the wounds, it was like, wow. And it was like a spiral out of control moment. Like at first, like you, go, you really go through the five stages of grief. Like you're really in denial. Then you're angry. Then you like try to like, you blame yourself, I want to say. Like you try to overcompensate. Like you try to like, if, the, if I would have did this or if I wouldn't have done that, if we would have came kind of more together after the first issue, this wouldn't have happened. I start like placing blame on my loved ones and people that I love the most. Or just like if I felt like people moved on too fast or they wasn't really like affected. Well, I won't say they weren't affected. Everybody's different emotionally. So now that I'm older and I've grown to realize that I wish I could take that back because I could have gave my mom a hug a little bit more. I could have gave my sister a hug a little bit more just because they weren't handling it the way that I was handling it doesn't mean that they weren't affected by it. So now you talking some, some serious real conversation, like just, just raw. So there's so many things that you said that I want to definitely like get back to. One of them is placing the blame on yourself. And then we'll get into the part about, how other people grieve, but then like how that can make, make you angry. And then, so perhaps you lash out. So what what is, go back to that about feeling like, because you said it was your baby brother. Yeah. And so with you being his older brother, like what, what did you feel like you could have did something differently? It's like, I have five siblings, but as you know, we grew up together. So I didn't like really live in a house with them, but I went to Camden every weekend. I grew up in Longside. So when my aunt passed that I, that raised me basically, when I first moved there, me and him shared the room together. So it was like, I'm in the ninth grade and I share a room with my little brother. But even prior to that, that was always like my baby brother. That was like my son before I had a son. So he went like everywhere with me. He grew up with me and he was always before his time. So even though he was the baby brother, like you just felt like he was your age. Like he never missed a beat or a step. So. It's like he really did enjoy life. Like, so that's one thing I'm grateful for and appreciative for. Like, he had a lot of courage. He had a lot of heart. So, and I witnessed that. I seen that. So, like, that keeps me going. No, nah, that's good. I, I can understand being an older sibling and feeling like you, if you could have did something differently to protect him or help him or whatever that. Yes, I really think about that a lot. But at the same time, it's like everything really happens for a reason. So, like I said, the five stages. When I was angry, I was like blaming everybody. But then once I accepted it, it's like more so I like kind of came to peace with it. I'm, I'm not angry with anybody. I'm not, I kind of like accepted it. Like I know that he was a beautiful person. I know that he lived a beautiful life. So, and I know that he's like watching over me now and these blessings that I'm receiving now, I know like partially they could be because of him. Yeah, that's a, that takes a lot of a lot of growth and a lot of maturity to say that because people honestly carry that for years, just being angry. Because I feel like when people pass away, and this is in, in any family, but I've definitely seen it in our communities, it just the blame just starts going. It just starts going and it just can't well, slow down. Like I said, it's like plenty more since my brother. So this is something I've been having to deal with since like a kid, basically since a youngin. And I've seen it a little bit more, like even 
once I moved from Lawnside and I came to Camden for high school, like, so now at this point, friends that I'm going to school with is passing. I never seen nothing like that in my life. So even at that time, already going through what I was going through, grieving for the loss of my aunt, reason I had to move to Camden. And now my, my classmates is passing. And then one of my friends that actually hung with me and my little brother got killed on the night of my birthday one year in the ninth grade, matter of fact. So it's like, Kayshawn, matter of fact, his name is Kayshawn. So, but we called him Caddy. And, like, that affected us a lot. And that, like, kind of, like, changed the dynamics of what everybody was doing. I feel like that's when they start going through the five stages of grief where they start acting out and they didn't know how to address their emotions or how they felt. So, like, I think that's when, like, everybody kind of went left especially for us being so young and he wasn't murdered by like somebody else on the street he was actually murdered by the cops so that was just like even more crazy yeah. so then like a couple years later for the Trayvon Martin and everything else like that it's like wow where was the outrage for Caddy but no I, I think that's real I've had somebody before we talked about that just like not that it becomes like normal, but it's like who is having those conversations with those ninth graders that are losing their friends, and it's like this is just what it is. But you said you didn't since you didn't grow up in that, but then eventually, like you know, you had to you mix gotta in. adapt to your environment, mm -hmm. and you gotta like 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 you gotta be ready for anything at all times, and the unthinkable could happen anywhere. No matter where you at, whether I was in Lawnside or Camden, I still came to Camden every weekend. So I still spent time with these people on the weekend. We love Millennium Skating Ring. So that's where I spent a lot of time with my little brother, Kayshawn, a lot of other people that we lost and everything else. So it's just like. No, nah, no, no, nah, definitely. And so when we kind of go go forward with that, when you talk about the people like you were angry with and, and saying something you said was was big that you could have hugged your mom a little bit more. Like, like, let's talk about that because it's different where you say, like, I'll grieve differently than you, but, like, we're not family. But, like, within the same family, like, parents, immediate siblings, like, well, talk to me about that. All right. So, like, with death, like, when it's a grandma or something like that, we could still be a family, like, even though we also handle it differently. But with my little brother, like, when I say, like, that really took a toll on everyone because not only was he murdered just three months ago we witnessed a miracle so it was like we was just like out of it like i was out of it for like the 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 next two years after that like covid it's kind of like where i had a chance to sit down and think and really just like have to really come face to face with everything I've been blocking out and everything mm -hmm. I've been just every feeling, every emotion. Like I was going through it, COVID, but at the end of the day, look at me now. And so I'm happy that like everything happens for a reason. So, but with my mom, I could have hugged her a little bit more because it's like we all were affected. And that's her son. That's my brother, but that's her son. Mm -hmm. So, and that's her baby. Like that was her pride and joy. Mm -hmm. And, like, even when he got shot, like, she, like, babied him. Like, that was even more of her, like, her pride and joy. So, like, to see her hurt, but we all were, like, affected differently. And then we all, like, I know if I was out of it, because I can't even really remember 2018, 2019. Like, it's all, like, a blur. So... And I honestly don't even really know how I'm, like, sitting here today because it was, like, I really was, like, in a daze. Like, it was, like, a, like, I took a lot of losses, but that, that, like, that blew my mind and hurt my heart. Like, I was, like, wow. What, what, what parts of you, if you will, do you think, like, died when your brother did? And I say that because I talked about that before where it's, like, I missed a part of me that died when you did. Like some people don't realize that, that when you lose people, you lose a lot of yourself that you may never get back. Is there any parts that you lost and didn't get back? Yeah, like I, I have a bond with like all my siblings, but like the last bond that I like really did have, because I have another brother as well, but like he spent a lot of time away. So me and my other, my baby brother had like, uh, like a bond. So 
like everybody else may know him as something different, but I know him, know him. I like he different around me, and we were there for each other. Like it was at a point in time he was my baby brother, but we went. To, I was in high school, he was in middle school. We wore the same size, and we could share each other's clothes. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. so, it's like it, it was like different. Uh, like I got detached from like everyone, like all my close friends that I had. Like I like pushed everybody away because at that point I was like scared to get close to anybody because I'm losing so many people I'm building these bonds with and I'm losing myself as each person goes Mm. and like just digging deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole. So it wasn't a fear that they were going to die. Yeah. And if not even them, just myself. So I try to stay busy. I try to like keep going. I try to like, do what I really love because you only get one life and you only like, you got to live it. Like you really have to live it and you can't die when they die because I was dying when they were dying. So I'm trying to put them pieces back together and come back together. Yeah. Well, it seems like you're doing that. And I think this is a big first step. Like I said to you in the beginning, a lot of people aren't going to do this, not going to do it. And so for us to have this conversation, like you did it for yourself, but also I hope that you feel proud that you're also going to help a lot of other people as well that look like you, that's from where you're from, that just feel like you just got to accept it. Like, this is what it is. Like, this is what we're around, what we're used to. But, no, it's, it could really become very detrimental when you got to bury people that you love. Yeah, and it's like it happens very – it's not something that's like – that doesn't happen often. Like everybody is battling something. You see people happy, you see people smiling, they really battling. Like I see my Facebook memories and to everybody else, I'm having the time of my life. And I'm looking like, when did I take this picture? Mm-hmm. What I don't even remember none of this. Like, so it's like, to them, it's like I'm having the time of my life. And to me, that was the worst time of my life that I ever had to experience. And still to this day, like, I have my moments where I I think I accepted it. And then, like, something will happen or one of his friends or a close associate to him will pass away, which just happened a few days ago, actually. And now I'm seeing posts of my brother as well with the associate. Ooh, that's deep. So it's like it brings it, even though you thought you buried it, you thought you were okay, it's like, damn, I don't know if I can. Yeah, no, you good, you like, good. Damn, like. And at that moment, it's like you don't like you really gotta live. Like it was like you can't get sad anymore. You was like, I gotta keep going. I gotta keep going. Yeah, that that's deep. I never actually considered that thought of like you have a person that passed away and then like someone else does that will be in the same pictures and like just kind of having to like relive that. And one thing that I I realized too is for me, and it ho- it might be helpful for you. But when it comes to the losses that I've that I've suffered, I never fully accepted them. What I've accepted, though, is that like life itself, as far as I knew it, wouldn't be the same. And that helped me because some days I, with some losses, I'd be like, damn, I know that did not happen. Like it's for Moet, it's it's almost been 2020 is going to be 10 years. That's a decade. Yeah. And I still be like, mm, no, nah, I can't believe that. Happened. I can't, like, yeah, you, you really can. Like you try to wrap your mind around it. You think you OK. And then sometimes you really be in denial. Like, I'll even catch myself, like, when I'm going through something or when I'm in, like, one of my lowest moments and I'm picking up the phone, calling my aunt, like, oh, crap, like, she not even here. What am I doing? So it's like, and then that just, like, sets you back. So like I said, like, grieving is really a long process. Like, no matter how how you try to hide it, we're all grieving in some way, shape, or form. Or we all going through something else and that could trigger grieving. So, yeah, no, that that's definitely true. I mean, I think one of the things I, I wanted to go back to, and it's again to your to your comfort level, when you talked about not even remembering half the stuff in the blur. Like I posted this recently when I was like, you know, drugs, alcohol, drinking, smoking, like it doesn't equal therapy. Did you did you was that like did was it any of that or you just were in like a blur? No, well, like, kind of, like, I do this thing where I block stuff out. Like, when you've been through a lot of traumatic things, it's like you learn, well, not learn to, you, like, eventually just want to forget it. So you'll try your best to just block it out, forget all about it, that it happened. So, yes, like, 
when my brother passed, I was drinking obsessively. Like prior to that, I was just a weed smoker. I've been mm-hmm. smoking weed a lot. Like, mm-hmm. but once that happened, I was like a drinker, drinker. I'm talking whole fifths, like where I don't think I was sober any day for like two years mm-hmm. after that. Like, um, like out of it, out of it. But like, I'm holding myself together because you know I gotta keep my little pretty boy image up at the same time. But it's like, if you catch me slipping, then it's like you already know why I'm slipping. So it's like you're not really gonna judge me too much because that was kind of not even just traumatic for me. Like he, he was loved by everybody. Like everybody knew him. So mm-hmm. it's like you know, I got a little past a little bit. But then that's at, at the same time, it's like you gotta get your stuff together. You gotta clean it up. You gotta tighten up. And no matter who you lost or what you going through you gotta like keep going yeah do you feel like people did give you that pass though because I've, I've heard people talk about not feeling like supported no. or people right. understood so, other people understood but i felt like my family the people that i thought like we would come together more after the past and it was like they were more so like judgmental because just because they didn't become alcoholics or just because I'm like, at least I'm an alcoholic. I could be out here smoking crack, doing cocaine. I could be out here like trying to suppress it with many other different things. And I'm not. So for me, even though alcohol can kill you as well. So, and I still drink my wine. So I don't drink (laughs) hard liquor, but I still drink my wine. But back then I was drinking hard liquor, Henny, Remy, 1738. I was getting it in like every night, every day work and then once COVID hit and that's when I had to like sit down and I had to like face every demon every thought head on because remember when it first hit like liquor stores and stuff wasn't open until like the first couple days until like 8 p.m. I was at work I didn't get off to after so I couldn't get no liquor none of that so I had to go home and I ain't had nothing but my thoughts so that's real. That's real. I know we talked a lot about the negative parts of like COVID and I'm sure that was scary. But that pause, because I always say this all the time, like you, you can't outrun grief. You really can't because it'll just manifest in other ways. Like you'll you'll be in a relationship or you'll be in this or you'll be in that. You'll be like, why am I acting like that? But like, yo, you lo- you buried your baby brother. Like that's a real thing. And so like if nobody ever gave you permission to feel like that's a hard thing to go through. I, I don't I'm not in any authority, but I'm just telling you that that's a hard thing to go through. But, like, not even that. Like, because remember I said to you many people, like, I've known you, like, almost all my life. But by the time I was in the fifth grade, you were out of the same school that we Mm -hmm. were in. So, Mm -hmm. like, anybody that was in school at the same time, they also know that in the fifth grade, I found my grandma did come home from school. She lived directly around the corner from where I lived at with the aunt that was raising me. So, like, it's been, like, grief since, like, how how did you move through that? So I didn't I wasn't aware that you found your grandmother like that's yeah, that's so rough. yeah you were in MySpace or Facebook and all <laughs> that wasn't out back then. Yeah, so it basically wasn't, right. it's like if you didn't if if your grandma or your mom wasn't familiar with my grandma then you probably didn't know. That's true. But yeah, like that was like a a hurt piece and a hard piece too because like I do hair now. And with her, that's who I started doing hair on. Like, that's who I was greasing her scout. Like, that's who, like, was pushing me. Like, like people know their kids and their grandkids. Like, she always said, you a star. You're going to shine. I always shine your light. Like, don't ever dim your light. Just, like, she kept it real with me. So it was like, when I, back then I didn't understand. But now that I'm older, I do understand. I'm like, yeah, Grandma Tony, you was right. Like. Yeah, is you a star? That's for sure. So, no, that's 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 a lot to pivot. So, did you? Was there? What was the support like that? And being in fifth ooh, grade and back then, just having to. All right. So back then, my aunt was raising me, and I was in the fifth grade. She died from cancer when I was in the eighth grade. I'm not sure how much long after that she was affected from cancer, but I know like what I witnessed, what I seen with my own eyes. It was like she was deteriorating before my own eyes, but I didn't realize that nobody told me anything. But with my grandma, it was like, wait, what did you ask me? No, just like, what was that like? To How did you, like, what was the support like to just kind of go from oh, finding really her there? it wasn't no support like that. Like, back then, you know, it's a black family, so it's like, you know, they got, like, different cultures. It's like, you grieve during the funeral, we, like, the 
that's the only week that you're going to see everybody, y'all hugging, y'all crying, y'all expressing yourself. Then after that, you know, it's kind of like everybody go back to like their everyday lives. My aunt did try to get me therapy, but back then I was so angry. I wouldn't talk to nobody. Like my whole personality changed. I went from kind of like happy-go-lucky bubbly to just like evil where I was seeing my aunt praying every night, like, God, I don't know what's going on with my child. I don't know what's wrong with him, but help him. Like, and I'm like, all right, I got to get my act together because I was really acting out. Like, I changed the whole personality. Like, I was angry. I was mad. At who or what? Just life. Like, where's the support? Like, I, I didn't expect to come home. And then it's, like, crazy how I felt that. I was at school and... I was actually in Miss T class, and she I had her la uh, last period, and I'm like, um, I don't feel right. Like I was just sitting in class, and out of nowhere, I'm just like, I don't feel right. Like something don't feel right. And everybody looking at me like I'm tripping, and she steady teaching. She's like, huh? And you know her, mm -hmm. sarcastic and stuff. I'm like, no, something just don't feel right. She's like, well, do you need some water or something? I'm like, no, just I don't know. Keep going, but just something don't feel right. And I went home to my regular house, and I said, I'm going to go around the corner to check on my grandma or something, because I just don't, something don't feel right. And when I got there, unfortunately, and that was, like, at that time, because I was just in the fifth grade, so that was, like, hard and battling mm -hmm. so many other things in the fifth grade, just to be that young. It was, yeah. like, a lot mentally, physically, emotionally. So, like, it really affects your personality. Like, even now, like, I be wanting to be my happy, bubbly, happy-go-lucky self. But it's, like, so many pieces and parts of me are, like... And I never had therapy, so this is all, like, self-healing. And I never really talk to people in this type of emotional manner because it's, like, you can know me, but you can't know me like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's out there now. Yeah. So. No, but you opened up so much, and, and that's what I was trying to get at. And maybe saying parts of you that died maybe was a little bit much, but just, like, le losing those parts, like, throughout life. And sometimes you just sit and be like, man, I well, for me, like, I wonder, like, how I would be if I didn't have to experience certain things. Not that I would necessarily change it, but it's like, man, like, I used to be more fun, more free. Now I'm like, oh, this person's going to die. That person died. This is crazy. Like, I, I just, my just how the I, my anxiety, man is, yeah, yeah, anxiety, like, bad. who's next? Like, mm -hmm. I don't want, I like, Yeah, you know. even myself, like, I, I didn't fly for a, sh a couple years because I'm like, no, I'm going to die. Like, yeah. I just felt like that. That's how I feel. Every time I get on the plane, I'm like, I'm, I'm scared. God, please just let me go. I'm scared of heights. I don't know why I'm getting on this plane anyway. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, but you've been able to keep going, and I think that's really important. And so since you didn't have therapy, like, what's your thought? Like, would you... Would you do it now like or now do you... that I'm older and I'm kind of like more established, like I'm like consulting with people like, do you know any good therapists? Because it's like I want I need somebody that definitely relates to me. Like I don't want somebody that's not from my background. Like I need you to come from the gutter. Like I need you yeah. to experience a lot of things, seeing a lot of things so that you can relate to me a little bit more. Because I don't want somebody where I'm just talking and they're just like, you know, on their phone, like, yada, yada, yada. I heard yeah, this yeah, all yeah. before. Like, yeah. I need somebody. I can, I'm passionate. I'm a Sag. I'm a fire yeah. sign. Mm -hmm. So Me too. If I'm talking, uh, I need I need your full <laughs> attention. Fire and desire. So. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I mean, that, look, that's why I have this show. But that's, to be honest, the reason why I ask you is because when I created this show, people would be like, oh, you know, why would you want to talk about grief? And I was like, yo, honestly, there's a lot of people that I know and I love that's never going to therapy. Like, they're just not going to do it, but I know that they're hurting. And I know how I felt when I dealt with losing my wife, losing my grandma, I'm like losing my dad, losing people. And so I wanted something to be relatable where it's like, yo, like, I can go in here and just talk like this and just say whatever. Like, I'm not here to counsel nobody. I'm just here to provide a space for you to talk. And that's why, kind of why I wanted to come to the podcast because it's like I'm at like a space in my life where I honestly don't know where I fit in. But this podcast, this interview, I know this is something that we all can relate to in some way, shape, or form. So it's like even if I don't fit in, I aspire somebody because, again, like my grandma always says, stand out and shine, baby. So 
Yeah, what she would say now, she saw you because you definitely, definitely are are a star. And like I said too, just for me personally, like I've been friends with you on social media for a while, and I actually have seen the evolution. You try different things, different career paths, different stuff. I'm like, here he go, he trying something again. But but I never, I never was like, oh, he just doing all this stuff. It was like, yo, that's what's up. Like if you try something and you're like, uh, I don't know, you know, you did the cooking, you done this, you moved, you came back, you've been doing so many things. But yeah, like, but where, where are you life, at now like, though? I feel like I feel like you're. Oh yo, yeah, this is this is it. This, this is, is it. definitely like this is my passion. This is where I'm at peace. Like this is where I just like this is my therapy. Each stroke of hair is my therapy. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it we really definitely will. We definitely gonna make sure that people know where to follow you and just check you out because a lot of people that do tune in or follow me and they they a lot of people that we went to school with and stuff probably don't even know that you do hair. Or I don't anything. even think my dad really knows to this day. <laughs> so like you're right, like they don't really know. Like yeah, and but but people will want to do that and, and show love, and I think that's important for us to do that. And so you can go out and have conversations with strangers. I can people can come on the show, but these conversations are always going to mean the most to me. To be able to have have people that I know, you know, especially you know. like in this type of setting and this deep and intimate, because it's like I needed this conversation as well. So I don't really open up much. I don't really talk to people, and then I'm a hairstylist, so I listen to other people all day long. So, and then when it comes to my friends, I'm hearing their problems all day long. But my deep personal friends, now they know. Like they see me cry, they know. Like they don't pay attention to that social media because I could post a picture of me. Uh, smiling on social media, but I'm on the phone with my friend crying on the floor, rolling around. Like that's real. I can't take this. Like what's going on? Like so. Does crying help you? It really does because I be feeling a lot better because I be trying my best to hold it and to keep like keep going, keep going, keep going. But everybody had that breaking point, and it's like if you don't cry, you gonna do something crazy because like I be frustrated. I be realizing i see myself taking it out on other people i see it like my actions but it's like what you put in the universe is what you get back so it's like once i had covid once i had that time to sit down i stopped like thinking so negative i stopped like being so angry and it's been nothing but blessings ever since so i'm kind of like grateful for covid low-key like i'm even myself i'm happy i'm a lot happier i'm not depressed because before covid i was so depressed. I didn't know which way I was going for real, for real. So, yeah, no, nah, that's definitely powerful. One thing that I always like to ask my guests when they come on the show is, if you had to choose a color for your grief, what would it be and why? Black, because I used to always wear black, but now I try to like put a little bit more color. But I was an all black, uh, all black person because that's that was my mood for real, for real. Because people don't really notice you. Like you think they notice you, but they don't notice you. You can be in a room full of people and nobody really know that you really hurting inside, or you need a hug, or you really need to talk to somebody. Or even if they do notice it, they just got their own. They so wrapped up into their own stuff that they got going on. So it just feel like nobody care. They care, but they just got the, you in the back of their mind because what they got going on is in the front of their mind. So it's like that's why a lot of people stay silent. That's why a lot of people really don't talk. But me, I'm going to express myself. I'm going to say how I feel, not to just any and everybody. Like I said, my personal friends know me. But to a stranger, you're going to think I'm perfect, perfect Patty. But that's not for you to know. But, you know. <laughs> no, nah, I love that, man. It's, it's definitely been just a good conversation. There's so much that you said that if I had, like, endless amounts of time, I would definitely, like, go back to. Maybe we'll have to have the conversation again. Yeah, and definitely I, and I, invite me again. Yeah, this yeah. This definitely a good conversation. No, listen, I, I'm telling you right now, I know, the, I know the people that listen. And this is a show that's, like, an international show. So, we got people, I mean, everywhere, everywhere I, I know, is, I see. like 83 countries. I don't know. I'd be like, really, somebody in the Philippines? I mean, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> people are listening to it, and that's the most important thing is to, to hear that. That's why, like, my thing and my brand is grieve and grow, right? Because we got to leave space for us to grieve, but we have to have that part where we got to grow because it's to my belief and understanding that joy is a choice like you don't just it don't i mean i know that in the church they say joy will, does come in the morning, morning yeah. it does but you got to be open to see it yeah and i feel to. like you've done that though like you've you found your joy lately i had to i had no choice i can't walk around miserable mad and sad like who wants that kind of life you only get one life it's time to live be happy smile and take your losses and with the losses it's like you become more solid like you become more hard so it's like 
not saying that it's a good thing, but it's like I'm not that same weak little boy, naive little boy that I was. It's like it kind of like not like I said, everything happens for a reason. Not that I'm happy that it happened, but it's like you know. No, definitely. So I I always like to talk when I have guests too. Is is important because sometimes when we lose our loved ones, people don't really talk about them too much more. Whether they don't want to make you feel uncomfortable, they don't want to get you upset, or people just forget. And it's not it's not that important to them because that's your brother. It's not my brother or that person's brother. So I always have like to say, you know, our in love and memory segment. Just like want to say in love and memory to your loved ones, but but if you feel comfortable, you can say it, say them by name because we haven't said your brother's name this whole time, and that's important for me to to say their name, keep their, their oh, memory. Oh, of going. course. So for me, I want like to say first and foremost, I want to say in love and memory to my aunt Dot Dorothy Moore, um, my little brother Dashim Lemire Funches, um, um, his friend that just recently just passed, Jaron Cream, Kayshawn. I can't remember his last name at this point because I kind of like blocked it out, but we call him Caddy. They, if they see this interview, they're going to know who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of my aunts and family members, I, I, it's so many, I can't name by name, but those are like the most mm-hmm. important to me, kind of like affected me. So, yeah, yeah, no, I love that. It's just important because I, I just feel like we don't get enough opportunity sometimes to just say their name or just say like in love and memory and that they'll never be forgotten. It's super important. And I know that your angels definitely got to be proud of you. I am. It was, is for sure a pleasure to have you on the show. But before, but before we get out of here, where can people follow you and connect with oh, you? Oh, definitely. They can follow me on my IG. It's, it's the one and only, but it's pronounced the one D A W O N only O N L Y underscore. And Follow me and connect with me and DM me and reach out. I can help you. I, I I like to listen and talk to people. So definitely don't be a stranger. I feel the same way you feel. You're not definitely not alone. Uh, that, man, those last <laughs> words, that's the most important thing is to remind people that they're not alone. And I feel like thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for coming on. You definitely have a home here. You can come and share your story whenever you feel comfortable to do that. I'm going to continue to pray for yourself, your family, and all of those thank people. You, thank you. you Guys, well. thank you. Listen, I, <laughs> I take the prayers and all that, too, just because I'm Jay Nicole, the Grief Bully, and the Grief Bully Podcast. Like, I hurt, too, all the time. Trust me, it's, it's hard, but we can do it, and we're doing it, and we're doing it together. Guys, it's been another episode. If you're watching on YouTube, drop a comment. Let us know your thoughts. Let me know what you're thinking about anything, how it helped you. If you're listening to the audio, leave us a review. Drop a few words. I would appreciate that. And y'all already know if you want to connect with me, don't hesitate. But you can't do that if you're not following me. So what are you doing? Go follow me over follow on Instagram. Her, definitely, yes. <laughs> At I underscore AM underscore J Nicole. Guys, so next time you already know. Love and light. Peace.